today, and the road to Charlotte is starting to heat up as we start the second half of our ACC doubleheader. The Eagles of Boston College have come to Tobacco Road to meet Dave Dorrance, North Carolina State Wolfpack. It's ACC College Football Saturday. Second Saturday in October, we welcome you to Raleigh at Carter Finley Stadium in the Atlantic Division of the ACC. And Dave Doran and NC State are back at home after a loss at Clemson last Saturday. The Wolfpack has returned here to meet the Eagles of Boston College. in Doran's second year, but they're winless in ACC play. Boston College has got three wins, and they've lost their only conference game, and that sets the stage for you in the Atlantic Division. And realistically, you know Florida State, Clemson, and Louisville are kind of the top three, and it's not the road that the Eagles and Wolfpack have traveled. It's the road they're getting ready to run. You see where Boston College is going. Clemson at home at Virginia Tech. Louisville at home at Florida State. Finale with Syracuse. NC State today with BC at Louisville at Syracuse. Georgia Tech from the Coastal. Wake Forest and, of course, the regular season finale with North Carolina and Chapel Hill. Great to be with James Bates on a Saturday afternoon in the ACC. Jim Hildreth will join us in just a moment. High stakes in this ball game for these schools, but maybe not for the reasons that people are thinking. Right, not just for this year, but next year, the future. These are two of the youngest football teams in college football, so these coaches desperately need to get to six wins. They need that bowl game. They need those bowl practices. Imagine what a month of extra practice can do for all these young guys, and a win today would be huge for each of these squads. Well, and when both schools have been successful, their quarterbacks have led them, and ironically, a pair of guys that used to call Gainesville, Florida home. Oh, yeah, former Gators. This guy right here, Murphy's Law. Well, the law is on the ground. He's the ruler on the ground. The best rushing quarterback in the nation, averaging over eight yards a rush. And when you run the ball so well, it sets up these defenses for a big pa a pass play. But they've got to hit them. Six interceptions is way too many picks for the number of times they throw. So you better watch out or Adazio will make throwing the pick skin against the law. Now, the other guy, Jacoby Brissett, unlike Murphy, he'll have two years here. It's one and done for Murphy, but just a junior is Jacoby Brissett. He likes to get out on the fly and enroll and can really throw on the run. Not quite the runner that Murphy is, but shifty enough to buy some time with his legs. He's a great fit for Dave Doran's offense and does a good job of taking care of the football. Third in the ACC, efficiency third in total offense as well. Well, Jen, so while we've got Brissett and Murphy, like my partner, former Gators, there's a little bit more to it, right? Yeah, I talked to both of those guys this week, Wes, and Jacoby and Tyler were very close when they were at Florida. They remain very close, talk every week. And in fact, Tyler Murphy told me when he was weighing his options, trying to figure out where he was going to go, if he was going to transfer, Jacoby was helping him, giving him pros and cons. And you better believe BC got a pro because it meant this day would come, that these two former Gators would get to face off against one another. Now, Brissette was the first to leave game a sophomore season in 2012. Murphy eventually followed suit, following the guy he said is like a brother to him to the ACC, and what an impact they have had. Murphy on the ground has been sensational, and a little catch and release from the Florida Gators has certainly benefited these two teams. And I tell you what, I talked to these guys, they said they have had this game circled on their calendars for a while, and while they want to do well and get some bragging rights, they also realize it's a pretty big game for their teams. And it's very unique. You see guys maybe from former schools, but rarely do you see starters at the same position squaring off. And here's our four keys to the ball game today with the Eagles and Wolfpack. Yeah, and it's not the uh, the 90s boy band bye-bye-bye. It's bye-bye-bye week. BC has to come into this one fast. They have to get off the bus swinging and start fast early. They can't let the bye week kind of lull them into this game. Skills to pay the bills. The Wolfpack feel like they have better skill position players. Well, they have to play fast and they have to in that category beat bc today with their speed with their athleticism and paying the bills with w's that's what it's all about here on the gridiron on college football saturday well even with the students away for fall break an outstanding crowd here at carter finley stadium in raleigh and nicholas sadie has got it teed up and 
Boston College won the toss and elected to receive. BC's won their only road game. Ironically, their season opener against UMass. They played them at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. Just their second road game of the year. Sadie's kick and Miles Willis, the sophomore from Atlanta, will touch a knee. So Willis and Boston College will start off its 25-yard line. And there is a look at the grad student, Weathersfield, Connecticut, and Tyler Murphy. And they're not all grad students. Mention the youth of these two football teams off the top 48% of this Eagles squad, freshmen and sophomores. 30 freshmen got on that plane. It's almost like the unaccompanied minors. Think of all the flight attendants had to follow them around the plane today. Murphy opens in a pistol. John Hilleman, the rookie from New Jersey, is his running back. And some early movement on North Carolina State. Big 75 is T.Y. McGill, a senior from Jessup, Georgia. All sides, number 75, with contact. Five-yard penalty remains first down. And that's the referee, Riley Johnson, with the game's first penalty. Wes, I think these first couple series defensively, offensively for the hometown MC, NC State Wolfpack are so huge. You look at the Florida State game and you look at the Clemson game, and you talk about two different ball games, but it was the way they started. Started fast against the Seminoles. We couldn't get anything going right against Clemson. Murphy going to throw here early, looking deep down the field and just beyond the reach of Shaquem Phillips, another grad student transfer from the University of Connecticut who had a big ball game against Pittsburgh in their only other ACC contest. Oh, and I like the play call. All NC State has heard all week long is how they're going to come out smash mouth and try to run it right at you. They try to go up top, but just miss. When they do go to the ground, John Hilleman it gets better every single time out, and Sherman Alston is one of those speedsters, one of those playmakers can make the big play. He was non-existent in the CSU game. He was big against USC. Second down play, and here's my Willis picking up the first down to the 38-yard line. Our impact players brought to you by Toyota. Justin Burris makes the tackle. The redshirt junior at corner, and there is a look at the true sophomore, Miles Willis, who added some weight in the offseason to get to 200 pounds. And he runs behind this big, huge Boston College line. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's a guard. It's an offensive line. The, the guards in this offensive line have to be athletic. They have to be able to get up and move. A lot of pulling from inside. Nice first down at the gut. First down play. He'll throw. Catch is made by Dan Crimmins. Here in Raleigh, Boston College has just picked up a first down on the opening possession of the ball game for the visiting Eagles. We welcome those of you that have been watching Middle Tennessee State in Huntington today against the thundering herd of Marshall. Here in Raleigh in the Atlantic Division of the ACC with James Bates, Jen Hildreth, our great crew, West Durham. Welcome to ACC College Football Saturday. A 23-yard throw from Murphy to Dan Crimmins. A 6'5 wide receiver gives BC a first down. That's Hillman in the backfield. Play action again from Murphy. And a throw this time to the backside and another catch for the former Tight end, Dan Crimmins, playing more of a wide receiver role at 237 pounds. Comes in leading Boston College now with 16 catches on the year. How about the offensive coordinator, Ryan Day, putting it up in the air? And I like the way BC has started this football game. And you know what else I like, Wes? I like how everything is off of the play fake. Too many times against Colorado State, it, it was just a drop back. And when you've had so much success on the ground, Freeze those linebackers. Give them a good hard play fake. Make them think that it's going to come running right in their laps again and just pause them. And every pass we've seen right there has been after the big play fake. Play clock down to five. And here's the snap to Murphy. And Tyler Murphy going to keep it to the left side. Good run pursuit by the Wolfpack. And Josh Jones, the strong safety, makes the play. Out of NC State's 4 2 5. Here are the Toyota impact players for state on defense. Well, Jared Fernandez, just a freshman, but he's been big there in the middle. 45 tackles, second on the team. And Hakeem Jones, the safety, a junior out of Henderson, North Carolina, leads this team with 47. 
And those safeties are so big against this offense, but already you're seeing they like to hit them inside, inside, and then get to the edge. And that's what Tyler Murphy can do, turn on those wheels, setting up a nice second and short hit. Willis comes into the ball game. You see three receivers to the top of the screen. Here's a counter with Willis back here to the near side. And Miles Willis will have enough for another Boston College first down as Burris shoved him out. And BC, for the 19th time this year, the first time on their opening drive here today, they're in the CPI security red zone and James 72% touchdown percentage for Boston College. Not that many trips per se, but uh, they cashed in. They're cashing in on this opening drive. No, no lingering effects of the week off and no hangover. It doesn't seem any way early from that Colorado State loss. I know a disappointment. Easily this team could be four and one coming in here today. Seventh play of the drive for the Eagles. And straight ahead, Willis. To about the 10 yard line. Kentavia Street, a true freshman, makes the play for North Carolina State. You see opening up those gaps, Big Ian Silverman, another transfer from the University of Florida, got up to the next level, all on the middle linebacker, Fernandez. And again, similar situation, second down and medium, second down and five, second down and six. Gosh, that opens up a lot of play calls for play callers like Ryan Day and like Steve Adazio. Second down for North Carolina State, six to a first down. Boston College in NC State territory. Now Hilleman around the edge at the right side, and John Hilleman scores. Touchdown for Hilleman will be his seventh of the year. A 10 play drive for Adazio's Eagles to start the ball game. This was a big time commitment a year ago. The true freshman gets better every single time out. Look at the big body. And look at him go and turn the corner. I hate to bring up this name so early in this broadcast because it was a record day for him last year. But Andre Williams went almost 350, an ACC record on this defense last year. And that's a body that's on its way to getting like the big man last year for BC. The point after is good by Mike Knoll, a true freshman playing in his first collegiate game. But John Hilleman has put BC on the board early in Raleigh. Seventh rushing score of the year. Freshman. Well, in Raleigh, an early marker for Boston College. Quiets the crowd at Carter Finley Stadium. The Eagles 75 yards and eight plays, and John Hillman's 10 yard run has given Boston College an early 7 0 lead. Skip out of bounds. That's Jimmy Howell who's uh, doing the kicking for Boston College. Or Alex Howell, his brother was Jimmy, former player at the University of Virginia. Our ACC College Football Saturday doubleheader here in Raleigh at Carter Finley Stadium, North Carolina State, Boston College. We welcome you, though, of those that have just uh, seen Miami dismiss Cincinnati at Sunrise Stadium. James Bates and Jen Hildreth, West Durham, our great crew. Steve Adazio's team already on the board here in Raleigh with a eight-play drive on the opening possession. Now, after penalty, Jacoby Brissett and NC State play from its 35-yard line. Tony Creasy, a redshirt senior from Durham, North Carolina, is the running back. On first down, Creasy. It's back, I think, to the line, maybe just shy, Josh Kyes. That's another tackle behind the line. It would be his eighth of the year. He leads Boston College in that category. And our Toyota Impact players for the Wolfpack. Well, the, those running backs. I got days up there, but take your pick. Thornton Creasy as well. Got to get that ground game going. And Bo Hines graduated early from high school. And boy, has that paid off. He's really, really on the same page with J Jacoby Brissett. Leading receiver for the Wolfpack. On the outside. NC State trying to get the edge turn with Jalen Samuels, the 240-pound freshman from Charlotte. And he 
got a couple of yards running wide against this tough front for Boston College. Stephen Daniels, the linebacker in there, and here's the toilet impact players for the Eagles. Well, John Johnson has been in as the third safety some this year. Now he's your starting cornerback as they dismiss Bryce Jones this week. Josh Keyes already one tackle. He was in on that first stop. And here's a big third down and long. Don Brown loves to heat it up in this spot. Here is Brissett stepping up in the pocket. He'll keep. Has the first down to the 46-yard line, Jacoby Brissett. Steven Daniels, the linebacker, finally tracks him down, but for a guy that doesn't run very much, he handled it pretty well there. Yeah, how's this for shiftiness? Here comes the pressure. Everybody in the secondary backs turns, puts a little shake there on the linebacker, and how about the blocking downfield by Marquez Valdez Scantony? Those receivers have been fighting so hard on the edges. And wow, what a punch to the gut for BC. You got him stopped. You're going to get off the football field instead. A scramble for a first. And Brissett looks to throw here on first down. Deep shot looking way down the field. And he overthrows Brian Underwood, the redshirt senior, who was battling deep down the field against Justin Simmons, Jen. Well, Jacoby Brissett got to see his former Florida Gator teammate, Tyler Murphy, lead the Boston College team down the field and score a touchdown on their opening drive. You know he wants to match him step for step. These two very close. And one thing, we just saw some good shiftiness from Jacoby Brissett. He feels like he has that advantage on Murphy, although Murphy might not admit it. Although he did say Murphy has the better speed. So we'll just see how it all plays out. That's what you like, Bates. Good fun competition. Here's Brissett zipping it across the middle. Sliding catch made by Bo Hines. Dave Dorn and his staff very excited about this young freshman, James. Yeah, and on back-to-back -back plays, we saw the legs do the work, and now look at the gun. Standing in there strong, the junior quarterback. Boom, move those chains one more time, and the Wolfpack trying to answer. Lucy tries to bounce it here to the near side. Finds a seam, and inside the 35 to the 33 of Boston College, Stephen Daniels. We have two dozen tackles coming in the ball game, and as you noted, James, this is one of three backs we'll see today for the Wolfpack. Maybe four. Jalen Samuels already with a carry out the fullback spot. And it's a nice trio, averaging over five yards a carry. The three of them. This is the best right here. The creator. We see to the 30, and that'll be enough for North Carolina State first down. Josh Kyes, the senior linebacker, leads him in sacks. Had a big ball game against Southern Cal and their upset win over the Trojans in September. Dave Doran now in his second campaign here in Raleigh. His team with the first down. And to the near side, Matt Days, a sophomore from Western Florida, makes the catch out of the backfield. His 20th catch of the year. The tempo, they're right back on the ball, making these big plays now. They've got the defense on their heels. And here's a do-it-all guy. He's one of those three backs that we talked about. We got him lined up outside, and that's why he catch two. Six-yard play, Brissett to his right. And he will step out of bounds and have another first down. Twice we've seen Jacoby Brissett convert a first down play with his feet. Well, and this is so important. He said they got a third down and 11 right off the bat, and Dave Dorn leaned on that junior quarterback, Brissett, to get the first down. It's huge to come answer. I mentioned the three and out after Clemson scored on their opening drive. Bay's looking for room. Strezak, the linebacker, one of about five that Boston College is very comfortable putting in that order for Don Brown, their defensive coordinator. Boy, look at the NC State's ready to go now. Doran's got this group up in the gearbox, doesn't he? 11th player already in the drive. Put NASCAR. They know about NASCAR around here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Here's Brissett, second down. Middle of the field, caught. Matt Days. Second catch on the drive for Days. Simmons, the free safety, was right there with the board. Brissett throws a rope here. There he is, slot guy Days, just going to break it across the middle. And that's just too easy. Easiest throw on the books for the quarterback right over the middle. And they hand the ball, and Days, fighting for yards, gets toward the one. Dominic Williams pushed it back. There's Don Brown now, James. Complete old school. Oh, yeah, he, he, he likes it when he gets in those third and long situations. We saw earlier had a chance to really heat those defenders up, brought the blitz. But Jacoby tucks it and goes for the first down. It's also a defense that they've really challenged to tackle that. They didn't tackle nearly as well as they needed to against CSU in the loss 24 to 21 two weeks ago, and then they sat on that bye week. Here's the give. This is Creasy looking for the end zone. And he has it. 
for the Wolfpack touchdown. First touchdown of the year on the ground for Tony Creasy. Well, they, they finally huddle up there. No tempo right here, but it, was, it wasn't enough rest for a BC defense that was on its heels after that initial first three downs, and they could not stop North Carolina State. And that was huge for them to answer that opening drive touchdown by Boston College. This could be a fun afternoon here in Raleigh, partner. Nicholas Sadie's hit all 26 of his extra points. And that one is pushed through as well. So, Batesy, each team's had it once. <laughs> and each team's on the board in Raleigh. And there's what they're trying to get to. First Saturday in December to Charlotte, playing for the ACC title. A gorgeous Saturday afternoon. Temperatures in the low 80s as we get started at Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh. And even Miss Wolf likes it. She should. Her team on the board to match the early marker from Boston College. And we're locked up 7 all. You never know, these are the 6th and 11th best scoring teams in the ACC through the first six weeks of play. Kicked by Sadie halfway back. Miles Willis will take a knee. And Boston College will play from its 25 when we continue from Raleigh. BC and NC State tied at 7. Offensively, and that might be a bit disconcerting for Don Brown, the BC defensive coordinator, or Dave Huxtable on the NC State side. But you know, Adazio's team off of by James has got to feel pretty good, and likewise, Dave Dorn, whose team was shut out at Clemson. Well, especially you look at Adazio, his offense, the way they came out clicking, because they came out strong against Colorado State, jumped out to an early lead, and then it was all CSU there in the second half. That was at home. You know, a young team. Talk about all the freshmen he put on the bus. And, and for Dave Dorn's team, for them to answer, it's it, for them to get that taste out of their mouths from last week. 41 to nothing against Clemson. Couldn't get anything going. It was three three and outs to start the game for the offense. On the other side of the ball, Clemson was scoring, scoring, scoring. So for them to answer, it was huge. Now can they get a stop here on this BC offense? Because they didn't even slow them up in the first drive. Murphy on play action again. This is Bordner, the converted quarterback. 6'4", 230-pound grad student. And Fernandez makes the tackle on Josh Bordner. There is John Hilleman, who is starting to gain momentum here. He's their second leading rusher. Freshman from New Jersey and seventh in the ACC in yards per game in nearly 75 a contest. Well, Hilleman, Rouse, Willis. Outlaw, they're big on Outlaw, another freshman as well. And here's Murphy keeping it. Rolled out to about the 41 yard. NC State played it from the middle. Defensive end Mike Rose circled around. Wes, as big as third downs are, when you can put yourself in a situation on first down, you have so much success as BC has early on that first down. It, it just opens up. You can do anything you want. And it's a BC offense that now can do so many things with Tyler Murphy. This is an extremely different offense than what you had last year with the Eagles. Here is the jet sweep with the freshman Sherman Austin, and NC State was ready. Josh Jones, the redshirt freshman playing in safety, was right there to greet Austin at the 44. Great job on the edge. There's Sherman Austin. Look at him. Five foot six, maybe, and an excellent job. Travius Wright, the sophomore from Vero Beach, Florida. A couple times watching the FSU, watching the Clemson game, he really understands his position. He really understands that all he needs to do is fight, fight, fight to get outside and keep it inside. Let all those other guys with the white hats on come over there and swarm the football. Excellent job on a little speedster there to shut him down for a three-yard game. Second and seven. They think it to Austin this time. Murphy going to keep it and has the first down. And he's taken out of bounds in NC State territory, 43-yard line. Jones shoved him out over there. Already Tyler Murphy making some impact here. 
running, you knew that would happen, but throwing the ball. Almost lost his lucky towel. That was important to get that thing back. Great. These quarterbacks already, we've seen a nice stick, a little shake in open field. Two big whiffs by these defenders trying to bring down these shifty quarterbacks so the chains move again. Murphy's averaging nine yards. He's got 27 yards on three carries here in this first quarter of play. That's Willis. And he'll take the sweep going to the right side. Great run pursuit by the Wolfpack. First guy to get there, Contavious Street. True freshman from Eastern North Carolina, Greenville. Boy, Street handled that great. Absolutely, Wes. Watch him change his angle. He's out there in the open. Adjust that angle. So many times there, especially a young guy, the freshman will, will take the wrong angle and let that quarterback, let that runner get to the edge and turn the corner. It wasn't happening there. Kept widening, widening, flattened it out, and drops him for a loss. Streets listed is third on the depth chart, too. Yep. State rolling a lot of guys through there early on that side of the ball. Loss of four. Murphy looking for an alley to the right. Has one. First down and more. Tyler Murphy scores for Boston College. Let's go! 47-yard run for Tyler Murphy in Boston College. Well, and the one graduate transfer can thank Another graduate, Josh Borden, watch number eight. You get guys down on the ground, good things are going to happen. What a block, and look at the wheels by Murphy. One thing that Clemson had a lot of success against this defense with was the quarterback lead, but it was all inside. This time they busted outside, a lead blocker and Bordner for Tyler Murphy, and he knows what to do once he gets to that sideline. It's off to the races. Big plays have killed this defense. If they don't give up so many big plays against Florida State, they beat the number one team in the nation. They had them on the ropes down 24 to seven in the first quarter just a couple weeks ago. And the big plays continued against Clemson. And here's a great big one at 47 yards. Point after by Noel is good. Young freshman from Ohio. He's hit a couple of extra points in his collegiate debut. And you see Tyler Murphy with 74 yards on four carries and the 47-yard touchdown. And, and here's the thing, James. If you saw anything about Boston College early in the year, you knew they could run the football. They did it on the boys of Troy in September. Right. The number nine team in the nation then sure found out the hard way what they were dealing with on Chestnut Hill. And it was coming from all angles. And it was a disciplined effort offensively and defensively just ran it right down the throats of USC and made them like it. And you know what's funny is we talked to Steve Adazio yep. this week, and he talked about trying to simplify a little bit this offense because last year it was a very simple offense. You knew exactly what you were going to get, but they did it so well. So it's like, I want to do a few more things. There have been, I think, even more wrinkles in this offense here today, and they've done them extremely well. How'd you like to defend against this? I mean, they've, we've seen the inside power. We see the quarterback roll and throw a little bit more than he has, and then you can get him outside like that. Then you've got a little jet sweep even mixed in there. There's been a lot of different play calls for these 14 points. Here's Days at the five. Matt Days looking for a seam. Midfield and tackled by Willis in Boston College territory. Days' his longest return had been 35 yards earlier this year against Old Dominion. He almost housed this one. Well, the sophomore does it all. He's a running back. We saw him with a nice catch earlier. And look at him go. Good job opening that gap for him, and an excellent job to run him down from behind by Miles Willis. Mm, nice little shake, and it was that shake to just bring him back inside and give the running back, the sophomore running back who's out there on special teams, a chance to run him down from behind, but the damage is done, and they're, they will open this drive trying to answer here in B.C. territory. And the injured Wolfpack player is Bradley Chubb, a backup at linebacker, who is being tended to as the 50-yard return by Matt Days will give North Carolina State excellent starting position at Boston College's 45-yard line. And you see Miles Willis, the Sophomore running back from Atlanta is the guy that maybe saved the touchdown for the Wolfpack. Well, and when you get that mentality, you get guys fighting to be out on that football field. 
and on special teams. And it's good to see him get up and go off the field, Bradley Chubb. But when you've got your starters, this, this is a starting running back, Miles Wilkes. Competing and scrapping like that, it, it's, it, it's really, you've really done a good thing to push the right buttons for the mentality of these foot bumpers. You don't have guys that just want to take snaps off so they can be fresh when it's their turn to carry the ball or run down and make tackles. And you've got them competing to be on special teams. And eventually, when you build them on more depth with older guys, you've got the young guys fighting because that's their only way they're going to be on the field. Shadrach Thornton is the running back to start the series here for North Carolina State. Here's Brian Underwood on a little sweep. Trying to get to the outside and a fine play by Justin Simmons, the Eagles' leading tackler, coming up from free safety. It was a good block on Dominique Williams. They almost got him down to the ground, but just turning it on on that jet sweep. You see him fight to get that outside shoulder. You're going to hear me ad nauseum talk about getting that outside shoulder. Get him back inside. Get him back inside. We saw what happened offensively for BC. When Murphy got outside to the sidelines, you got to keep those guys inside and bottle them up. Just a two-yard gain. And by a great play by the safety. Here's another run. This is Jonathan Austin trying to find some room, sweeping to the near side. Josh Kyes, the eagle linebacker there. Austin, sophomore at six feet, who they're excited about. And here's what NC State did the last time, James. Yeah, a third down and 11. They had him. They were going to get off the field, but no. Jacoby Brissett tucks it and goes. And then it's all the way down to the paint, capped off by Creasy's short touchdown run to answer. Now they're driving again, but here's a third down and long. Watch out for this defense mixing it up on you. Well, they're going five wide for set. In time with the pocket crosses and the catch made, and that's Hines, the freshman to the 19. And Bo Hines converts a third down. Sean Sylvia and uh, Justin Simmons from Boston College make the play in the secondary. Boy, the, everything's collapsing around Brissett. Look at him. Patience, staying in there strong, putting his hand out, stiff-arming his blocker, making sure he has enough room to fire it in there and move it. Now Brissett to his right. And there's one complete. Valdez Scantling, sophomore from St. Petersburg, Florida, who comes into the ballgame with 15 catches, one touchdown average, and nearly 12 yards a catch. You know, the play that we've seen so many times against Florida State, Brissett refusing to go down. It was very similar there. Doesn't panic. Very cool in the pocket. Mm. What a smack that was. The ball popped loose. It's going to be ruled incomplete. Manny Espria tags Shadrach Thornton coming out of the backfield. So very quickly, North Carolina State is to a third down. Breaks on that ball and dislodges it. Wow. Wow. That's... How's that for... That for tackling. This is a defense that woke up a little bit in the off week, and that's been one thing that Adazio admittedly has fought for. How much is too much? Do we, we want to stay tough, but we want to rest them up a little bit. So there's another third down and seven. We're set trying to keep him on the field. He goes bringing pressure, and that's great. It's the tight end in for the touchdown. <laughs> Sixteen yard rope from Jacoby Brissett to David J. Greenwich, the redshirt sophomore tight end. No slack in that rope either. Was no. It? That sucker was tight. <laughs> <laughs> he throws a pretty ball. Sadie will try and add the point after we played just better than 13 minutes of ball baits and nobody can stop each other. Sadie's point after is good. We thought this game had a chance for big plays. We have already seen maybe as many as we've seen in some games already this fall. I'm a defensive guy, but I don't mind all this action. This is this is kind of fun right here. I'll tell you who does mind it is Don Brown, that defensive side right now for BC. The middle of the field has been wide open for the Wolfpack. A lot of times when you, when you stunt those linebackers around, you bring those guys, you lose them in pass coverage, and, and there's nobody dropping underneath. And that easy open window for Jacoby Brissett. Look at him, three of three on third downs today. And that doesn't count the first third down, the third down and 11 to keep his offense on the field. They answered then and they answer right now. 145 left in the first quarter, tied at 14. Okay. These teams combined for 59 points a year ago at Alumni Stadium, but 
good bit of that was on the legs of Andre Williams, who had an ACC in Boston College record 339 yards, including the closer late in the game to seal it. Not only the win, but the record. Here already, they've rolled to 28 points. 13 minutes and 15 seconds of football. Boy, they've been... You mentioned this explosive plays have kind of been the kryptonite for NC State. Boston College has given up some big plays here early as well, particularly those third down plays. And they're even more heartbreaking, you're right, on that third down because they're so close to getting off the field. The kick, I say these sails through the end zone. BC will play from its 25. We hope you'll join us. We got two more scoops of ACC college football for you next Saturday, Batesy. Another double dip. <laughs> Bob Rathbun, Coy Wire, Olivia Harlan will be in the Twin Cities for the Orange and the Deacons. Two young coaches building programs. Sarah Cures, of course, hosting uh, Florida State today. Wake Forest, an open date. And then that second ball game, we'll find Batesy and I at Papa John Stadium in Louisville, our first trip to Derby City for Lorenzo Malden and the Cardinals hosting Dave Dorn in the Wolfpack in the Atlantic Division. So a couple of Atlantic Division games for you next Saturday on ACC College Football Center. Now let's see if Murphy and the Eagles can get back on track. Two touchdowns, two score, or two scores, two possessions. And he'll throw here again. And he'll keep and step out of bounds a game of three. Mark Norman, the red shirt defensive end, senior from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Big 95, forced him out. Atlanta guy like Lorenzo Malden, the guy yeah. you just saw and with the uh, red dreadlocks for Louisville. We'll get a chance to watch him on the hoof uh, four quarters next week. And fans, stick around. Not just NC State BC fans, but football fans and, and people fans. Uh, Jim Hilton for halftime is a, a very special uh, piece on him, but you don't want to miss. Second down now. And Murphy will keep it again. Stayed a little better. Tighter against the run. Rodman Noel. Thomas Teal combined on the stop. And here comes BC's first third down, Jen. Well, and it's going to be a big play for this NC State defense, as you guys talked about. Happy day so far for fans and offensive players and coaches. The defensive coach is not so happy. Ryan Nielsen was giving it to his defensive line. I'm going to go ahead and tell you there's a little bit of challenging of the manhood going on during that last time on the sideline. Let's see how this pack defense responds. Again, it's a passing type situation now, and they've thrown it when they didn't have to early, but it changes up a little bit here on third and long. Murphy from the gun. Outlaws coming the game. Across the middle, this is Austin. And the little guy makes a first down play. To the 43 goes Sherman Austin. Josh Jones shoved him out of bounds, but that was plenty for the Boston College. First down. Uh, these defensive lines are fighting, but the offensive lines have been winning these battles, but just barely. Everything's starting to collapse in, and these quarterbacks standing in there cool and calm. As Murphy says, what up, Big Sherm? There you are. Sherman Alston, five foot six, couple plays already in this one, and we didn't hear from him at all against Colorado State. Murphy's four of his first five passing for 55 yards, and now here's Hillman stepping out of one tackle. And John Hillman toward the 48-yard line. Team Jones up from the secondary for North Carolina State. And that is the final play of the opening period in Raleigh. Well, we have had plenty of action in the first 15 minutes. Big plays for both the Pack and the Eagles. And we're locked up here in Raleigh. game summary reflects just how kind of explosive this ball game has been. Now remember NC State got the great kick return of 50 yards from Matt Days but Boston College is two for two on possessions in the opening quarter for scores. Likewise the Wolfpack and Tyler Murphy and the Eagles with Miles Willis in the backfield. And they open up a second a second and four here shows you how well they've done on first down. And there's Willis converting to another first down at the NC State 45. Tim Buckley is a redshirt junior in the NC State secondary, wearing number six, a transfer from Penn State, up to make the play on Willis. Already the 10th first down of this football game, and on those first downs, prior to that snap, all through the first quarter, 
almost six yards a play for Boston College. Charlie Kellerman, 6'4 redshirt freshman of wide receiver to the far side to BC. And Murphy looks toward Kellerman. And on a knee has made the catch at the 36. Yard shy of the first down. Boston College seems to be doing a pretty good job, James, of finding in NC State's base 4 2 5 the little spots that you can get seven, eight yards down the field. And those spots get so much bigger when you sell that play fake hard. But if you're not having any success running the football, nobody cares. Hey, they're not going to run it. But they're having success on the ground. Both Noel and Fernandez on that, uh, that run fake by Murphy went flying out of there for the back. Yeah, we're going to stop at your play here. NC State, after seeing Boston College substitute, was trying to make some defensive personnel changes. And Justin Burris was sprinting off the field. Okay. Game clock operator, please set the game clock to 14.08. And play clock operator, please set the play clock to 25. Start both on my signal. There Thank you. Go. Remember now in conference play, the ACC is using eight-man crews, and that includes the center judge. And that allows a little bit more of a management aspect for these crews. Against some of these hurry-up sets, and Boston College is not what you would call a traditional hurry-up team. NC State has shown that here in the opening period. But this eight-man crew allows a little bit more of the game management. You saw a piece of it there. Second and short. That's Austin in motion. And Murphy looks to throw. Now in trouble. Has it with his feet. Out of bounds at the NC State 24-yard line. Rodman Noel, who had a brother that played at BC, and another brother who played basketball at Kentucky for a year, Nerlens Noel, makes the play. Watch him, watch him freeze him. See, see how Noel, number five in the middle of the screen, he has to address that jet sweep as a linebacker. It's run first. So now you get him a couple yards out of position, a couple steps that way, and making him play the other way, Tyler Murphy. Again, second down and short. Second down and short. What are you going to call defensively? What are they going to do? It? So it's almost a freebie on a pass play. If you can tuck it and go easy. And hand the ball to Hillman. Hillman hit right at the line by Thomas Teal, but I'll tell you what, John Hillman's off to a bright start. He's our hardy star to watch. Freshman out of Plainfield, New Jersey, and the last time we saw him, wow, against Colorado State. Just gets better and better every time out. 128 yards on that sunny afternoon up on Chestnut Hill. They couldn't seal the deal with the win, but Hillman, fun to watch that day. Already a big part in the early going here in Raleigh. Today. He was originally committed to Rutgers. Big steal there for Gosling. 16 yards. Here's a little reverse. And Sherman Austin to the backside of the play. Looking to get the final few yards. And does for the Eagle touchdown. <laughs> 24-yard reverse to Sherman Austin. Throwing everything at you. Look, everybody getting out of there. You get them too fast. Young guys. Young guys. I got to make that play. Got to go make the play. They've had success. Everybody goes flying out of there. Hit them with the reverse and the speedster. Five foot six, maybe. 163 pounds. Nobody else wanted him. And the little big man has BC back on top. Nine plays, 75 yards, 416 time of the drive. And Adazio and his Eagles have taken three possessions to the end zone. Barely big enough to keep his seat down at the movies. Sherman Austin gives BC the lead. Big things come in little packages, don't they, James? And Sherman Austin may be the latest example of that. Well, and it's the big playability for Steve Adazio that, that we didn't see against Colorado State. One big play, and they've got, let's take a look at it again, big touchdown run by Austin. Go ahead and pause it right there, guys. Look at all of these defenders, boom, flying out of there. I gotta go make the play, and watch up here as we play the play on. Watch the block by Callanan. Go ahead and run it. Everybody goes flying out of there, but who can blame them? You haven't been able to slow down this offense, so, so I gotta make the play now. I gotta get out of there. Well, you know what? There has to be somebody on that backside, because that, that's what happens to teams that play too fast and a lot of times that's a young team and Callanan 
making sure it went all the way. Look at this. And a short kick. They collapse around. It looked like Devin O'Connor might have gotten the ball for the Wolfpack, and he did. So a little gadgetry by Adazio with Howell trying to splash one down again. Unfortunately for North Carolina State, Jacoby Brissett takes care of that football. This is a team that, that has really been efficient through the air because they've just got to keep answering. And you get the sense right now, who's going to flinch first? That flinch, you're hoping it's not your team with a turnover because they haven't had much of success stopping each other. Here's Shadrack Thornton spinning off a couple tackles and picking up about seven yards on first down. Kai is the linebacker next to him. You know, there's some thought that a year ago when NC State was going through a carousel of quarterbacks that Brissett was their best player. And I think he's proven he's their best player at least so far through the first six ball games of play coming in. Yeah. Last year it was guys in and out. Yeah. Offensive line that was in and out. Now you've got an established offensive line and you've got a quarterback that's the real deal. And not only do you have him here right now, but you've got him next to him. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage trying to get to the right side. It's a team that once again is fighting injuries. This NC State club. And uh, they're hoping to get Joe Tui, Tooney, their uh, outstanding guard, back next Saturday against Louisville. But uh, today, a little bit of patchwork going on for uh, Coach Doran. Mike Yurimovich is offensive line coach. Third down here for State. Let's see if these Eagles can get their first stop and get the ball back in the hands of that powerful offense so far today. Eagles bring five and Thrown looking for Underwood in the neighborhood. John Johnson starting over there at corner today. Bryce Jones was dismissed by the Eagles earlier this week. Violation of team rules. And Johnson, a sophomore who had just four tackles a year ago and came into the today's ball game with a dozen tackles, had a pretty good play against uh, Underwood there on the ball that was underthrown. Nice is that, is that a punter out there on the field? It is. Will Bauman, who's one of the best, first in the ACC, second nationally at 48 yards a punt. He's first in the ACC in net at 43-4. Here is Sherman Austin waited at the 15 and signals for it makes the fair catch does Austin. So, four minutes gone here in quarter two. Beautiful day in Raleigh. For football and frisbee. Touchdown lead for the Eagles. Touchdown lead for the Eagles, 21 to 14. Early second period action here in Raleigh. With James Bates, Jen Hildreth, Dave Barringer is our producer, Gary Clem, our director, and the great men and women on our ACC College Football Saturday crew. West Durham will welcome you back to Carter Finley Stadium. Our Tyler Murphy's been fantastic here in the first half for BC. Big bodies in there now. He'll loop it back, and this is Dan Primmons, the junior wide receiver. Picking up nearly five on first down. Murphy, by the way, now six of seven. Gives him 69 yards of passing, James. 90 yards on seven carries. Pretty good start, huh? Absolutely. And it's, and it's been an offense that with this bye week has really gotten comfortable with the plays that they're going to run in the personnel groupings. Look at all the big bodies in there. Got all these big bodies. So as, as a young defender, I'm thinking, okay, we're going to pound it. We're going to pound it. And, and, and that's when you get those chess pieces. You, you talk about the chess match between the offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. Well, it comes with personnel, not just X's and O's. Fumble on the play. And NC State says they have it, and they do. Thomas Teal. it up with Mike Rose. Wow. They pull the center, Andy Gallick, and taking advantage of that empty spot, just getting off the spot, getting back there, disrupting it, and that was exactly what you needed defensively. You had to find a way to get off of the football field. How's this? Putting your offense right on the doorstep and a chance to come and answer now after they were stopped for the first time today. So... Boston College commits their first fumble of the year and just their seventh turnover. And now Creasy in a little wildcat set. 
Brissett here to the left. Creasy slides through maybe a yard to the 14. They line Jacoby Brissett all the way up here to the left side. And then put 5'11", 215-pound Richard senior Tony Creasy into the mix. And Dave Doran, former defensive coordinator at Wisconsin, and the head coach at Northern Illinois where he did a great job. I don't know if he had to be talked into that or not by Matt Canada, his OC, but he went along there. Well, he did it quite a bit against FSU as well. They did it with Thornton against the Seminoles. Good job defensively to shut it down. Here is Brissett taking the snap. PC bringing heat. Hit as he throws and almost intercepted. Backside, Manny Espria defending Tony Creasy as Stephen Daniels was the eagle to get to Brissett. Wow, bringing the heat, the big man up the middle, puts the pop cleanly on the quarterback and oh man you got to hold on to that the senior quarterback shoot he could have gone he could have gone to the other there and in the field and scored one defensively instead it's a third down and nine how about the pop 260 pounds the rusher there Stephen Daniels the middle linebacker NC State's three or four on third down five wide and Brissett under throws a pass that time intended for Jonathan Austin and so the pack We'll have to try a field goal off the fumble. Great job by Don Brown's defense. The sudden change, they get out on the field when they weren't expecting it after the fumble, jump right out there and put a stop to Brissett and NC State. We'll do a field goal trip. 31-yard try for Sadie. And on the year, he is 4 for 7. Longest 41 against Georgia Southern in their opening. The kick is away. And it is no good. Nicholas Sadie, now four for eight on the year, misses from 31 yards. The turnover means nothing to the Wolfpack. Well, here in Raleigh, Boston College with a 21-14 lead on North Carolina State. The Eagles have run 25 plays, average just under nine yards of play. And after the missed field goal by Sadie at 31 yards, Murphy and the Eagles go right back to work. And John Hillman on first down picks up about six yards. And James, we've sent Jen Hildreth to the top of Carter Finley Stadium. I mean, this was a hike getting up here, but these guys on Section 10, they've been talking to us on Twitter. I gave them a hard time for not reaching out last year when I tried to contact them. Here I am, Section 10, some devoted people. How would you describe, Dave, the, the fans in Section 10? They're crazy. These are the best fans outside of the student section in the stadium. We sit on the top row so we can stand up the whole time. We get crazy. When they're on defense, we're going wild. Let's go! <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, I think you have a couple of cheers. Is it time? Can, can we work one now? Okay. Section 10, move those chains shirt. We'll be, as soon as NC State's back on offense, we're going to be moving those chains. Shout out there, move those chains, cheer. All right, awesome. Thanks very much. <laughs> oh, oh, you want to see? Okay, hold on. Oh, yeah. Nice. Pretty good. We better put it up right now, though. DC's moving the chains, oh, guys. Jim, thanks. Jen said, I tried to get a hold of you guys last year. They think, well, who's this weirdo? Keeps sending his texts <laughs> through Twitter. She won't leave us alone. Here's Murphy. Little shovel back underneath, and that's Josh Portner for the first down. And Ryan Day has been working the pencil and the paper in the off week, hasn't he? <laughs> he certainly has. He's so up some new ball plays. So much for just a few plays and running them right like they did last year. No Andre Williams, but it, it's still impressive what they're doing offensively. And here's a little something. We got something for you, Porter. You blocked really hard this game. Yeah. Move those chains for us. And I've really been impressed with the captain, Josh Porter, the former quarterback, 6'4", 230 pounder. Just getting it done, whatever it takes, helping out this football team to move it offensively. Tyler Murphy, 176 yards of total offense already in this first half. And BC on first and 10, smashing with John Hilleman. So, Murphy has got BC to this touchdown advantage. Remember, they scored three touchdowns on their first three possessions. 
boy, you know that brought a smile to Steve Adazio's face coming off the bye week where they struggled in the second half against Colorado State. You know, and, and NC State has gone to a nickel as, as the base package defensively, so the bodies are hard to match when you've got all these bigs in for BC. They don't really have the personnel to always match. Hurt linebackers at the beginning of the year. Even. Tyler Rouse, sophomore Baldwinsville, Pennsylvania, who had 125 yards a year ago. Remember now, behind Andre Williams, who had 2,000 yards, there wasn't a lot of wasn't a lot of mileage coming out of the run game, but Rouse got a little bit in there. And boy, look at the contact there. See, and you see Josh Jones, that's a great look for the freshman. And, and because you see him, he's, he's a little bit more patient that time. Wait, 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 wait. Make sure they don't hit you backside like it was him against uh, Alston on the big reverse. He ran out of there, didn't go sprinting out, set his feet, then saw what they were trying to do, made up his mind, go make the tackle. Here's a third down and short now. BC's hit their only third down. Out in the flat, out low, can't hang on. And was that rule the fumble? There's a marker down right in front of the Wolfpack bench. That was considered, I believe, a lateral, and Art Norman is the guy, I think, who got a hand in the passing lane, deflected it around. Either way, great job by the freshman to make sure it wasn't a fumble. Oh, they'll get another shot at him. They, they, they need to look at it which they do every play to make sure the spot is right, that it was a backwards pass. Right. Because it was hit by Outlaw and went backwards. And it might have been a forward pass that just kind of looked like it because of where it ended up when it hit the ground. And Riley Johnson wants to get his staff lined up here because if it is ruled incomplete, it goes back to where they scrimmage from with the penalty. Ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. The foul is illegal formation. Five men in the backfield. So now, rather than it being fourth down off the fumble, it'll be third down. That penalty will be declined. Oh, okay. It'll be fourth down. There you have it. So now, Boston College is still going to punt. I'm with you there, James. I thought, I, I thought the ball was... The way the ball was deflected, you kind of thought that that might be ruled a fumble, and that's why the play continued as it did. Bo Hines has dropped back. He's averaging four and a half yards on just five punt returns. He had a seven-yarder last week for Clemson. Howard tries to hang this up. Hines will fair catch it at about the nine-yard line. So, six minutes and change left to go here in this first half. NC State back on the attack. Get a look along Hillsborough Street, not far from Carter Bentley Stadium. Fourteen, Boston College the lead. Six minutes to go here in this first half, and twenty-one points scored by BC. There's not only a touchdown ahead of NC State. This is the impact starts off the nine. But the set looking to throw out there is Days and just overshoots it. Incomplete. And there's the matchup you want. As much as Stephen Daniels means in the middle of that field, you don't want him isolated on Matt Days on the outside. Gosh, they spread it out. Good protection up front. And there he's he's a good eight yards behind the sophomore days. That ball's on the money. And it's a big time touchdown. Percent hit six of his first eight. He's now missed four in a row. 72 yards, a touchdown to Grinch. Second down, and Days will run with it here. And boy, got hammered. Stepping up into the gap. John Johnson, Justin Simmons. Well, you see the humidity number at 80 degrees, and the forecast, the chance of storms. It's better than a chance. It's going to happen, it looks like, here in the next half hour or so. So the crowd is being told that at Carter Finley Stadium. Earlier ball game today in Atlanta delayed nearly an hour and a half, James, almost two hours, Georgia Tech and Duke. So, quickly third down here for the Wolfpack. Three of five today. Brissett in trouble. And he'll be sacked. Brian Mahalik, the defensive end, led a stack of gold helmets to the ball. They had a lot of gold helmets walked up in there. They were showing an all-out blitz, back a couple out, 
and just bring four. There you can see even off the edge, they had Kai's coming and enough to confuse the offensive line. And we're set, they get to him with a big sack. And now it's fourth down and forced to punt out of his own end zone is Bauman. What a nice stop again by Don Brown's defense after they gave up that 14 quick points on the first two possessions. Bauman punts from the end zone. And Austin at midfield looks for a seam and dives back. Just outside the NC State 40-yard line, Rodman Noel downfield on a 46-yard punt. And BC gets an outstanding place to start in plus territory at the Wolfpack 41. A lot of possessions in this first half. This will be 11 total, the sixth for Boston College, James. And Dave Huxtable hit it to us yesterday, the defensive coordinator of NC State. This is one of the things he was worried about. Boston College finding the balance of run to pass. Remember, they couldn't really pass the ball a couple weeks ago against Colorado State. And right now, BC's kind of kicking it in both ways. Play calling by Ryan Day has been excellent, helping out make these passes easy. Look at this. Murphy and Bordner can't hang on. Wide open, down the hash marks. He turned around Fernandez, the linebacker. A couple balls. We just saw one for NC State. Would have been a big-time touchdown, and this one doesn't get any easier than this. It was a little bit out in front of Gordon, but he needs to catch that one on the stride. That's a touchdown for Boston College. Instead, it's a second down and 10. And again, go back to it. The hard sell on the run is freezing everybody because they've just been able to run it right up the middle. Tyler Rouse in the ball game. Looking at right guard, he'll pick up four or five yards there. It'll be third down for BC. Fernandez and Street make the tackle for the Wolfpack. And that's one thing. So, so look, so take it back. Here's Steve Adoson, and he said this to us before the uh, Colorado State game. We get in those second down and tens. <laughs> and that's what you get. You know, you had the play there, but you got to complete it. You can't throw an interception. You can't throw incomplete passes because now, instead of third down and six, third down and five, it's second down and five. How about Boston College? That is their first charge of this half. So a, a timeout punch by the Eagles. And... Uh, the 21-14 ball game, and boy, we had fireworks in the first five possessions of this game, didn't we? It was boom, boom, boom. First three touches for Boston College went to the house. First two for North Carolina State, thanks in large part to their junior quarterback on a few huge third down plays and doing it through the air as well. Two offenses that really came ready to play, and then things settled down a little bit. And we've stalled in BC here with the chance to keep this drive alive and make it a two touchdown lead. How about the 47 yard touchdown run by Murphy and some good hard running by NC State's Days and Creasy. That Days 50 yard pump return. And then BC went back on the attack with Sherman Austin. He got in the end zone and now all of a sudden out of the timeout by Coach Adazio, third and five for the Eagles at the Wolfpack 36. And here's Murphy, little speed option, first down for BC. Diving to the Wolfpack 29-yard line. And the first half keeps rolling for Tyler Murphy. Well over now, 100, and, uh, 100 yards of rushing. And he's approaching 100 passing. 108 yards on nine first-half carries. Big, big third down pickup. Again, defensively, we got a chance to stop him. Get off the field here. 3.30 left now in the first half, and they convert the speed to the outside. And this is Hillman. And the Wolfpack rally to the football after a couple of yards. With Contavious Street. He's been around the football, big 35. Freshman. Brandon Pitt, middle linebacker, also in there for Coach Doran's team. There's a good looking street on the right. He and Fernandez, two young bucks, playing for Dave Huxtable. Not a bad looking freshman, is it? Both these coaches have done a great job in recruiting from day one. And not just the young players coming out of high school, but some transfers, as we've seen in the quarterback spot as well. And here's Helen in the 
again. Second down, trying to get to the edge, and Pittman trapped him and tripped him up. It'll be third down for Boston College. Great job, 39. Brandon Pittman used his hands and shoved that blocker and then adjust that angle to make sure he goes and gets a shoelace to trip up Hilleman. Otherwise, that's a first down and then some. Here's another chance. Defensively, got to be disciplined. Teal went charging down the line for no reason last time. He was free in the backfield. You can't go flying out of there and get out of position. Got to play discipline and get off the football field. And Murphy slings it to Austin. He'll have the first down to the 16-17 yard line. Josh Jones, the safety. And tell you what, after he was very quiet two weeks ago in the home loss to Colorado State, Sherman Austin take quite a first down. You're going to see 18 blocking. Look at 18. These receivers have done a fantastic job down the field as well. I think that was Jeffrey J. We saw Callanan earlier on the touchdown run by Alston. The stock blocks by these receivers for Boston College have been the difference here early on with some of these big plays. With a tackle and Bordner around to the near side of the pet court. Here is Hilleman running behind that jumbo look on the right side by BC, unbalanced. Brad the safety, true freshman. One of the several guys who's enrolled here in January. Dave Dorn was telling us yesterday how big it was to get these young guys in here to go through spring and kind of understand football at NC State. It's paid off. These guys have been on the field a good bit in the first half dozen ball games. Second down. And eight now for BC. Hilleman's back in the ball game. It's Clemens in motion. Play action by Murphy. Pressure coming. And he'll be sacked. Well, back to the line of scrimmage. Art Norman was able to pull Tyler Murphy down. So now third and long. They need to inspect that, make sure it's not a sack because Art Norman is creeping closer and closer to a school record. Here you see 95. A good job by the guys in the red, staying in those lanes. Nobody going rushing up the field too hard. Create those great big gaps for guys like Murphy to move. Third down and eight now. Wind starting to whip around at Carter Finley. Hillman in motion to the left. Yep, BC will punch it here. 30 second timeout. Charge to Boston College. That is for second. Tyler Murphy comes over. And he'll visit briefly in there. So back to us. There's a good look at the 55 year old head coach from. Farmington, Connecticut, Steve Adazio, who won 13 of 24 ball games as head coach at Temple, offensive coordinator in Florida for six seasons, with Urban Meyer, worked at Indiana, Notre Dame, and at Syracuse in the late 90s. Got two national championship rings from his days there in Gainesville. You know what says a lot about him? His entire staff has stayed intact. Yeah, no question. Guys like playing for him, they like coaching for him, too. You see, we talked at the top. The road just beginning for both these schools. State, of course, losing to Florida State Clemson in consecutive weeks. You see BC, this is their second league game, and look what lies ahead. Three of those last four on the road, James, which really puts a premium, I think, on this one. <laughs> and, and, and go in there and get a win and figure out what it's like to travel. Sure. You, you know, that, that was one thing Adazio wouldn't stop talking about. I'm going to have 30 freshmen on the flight. They don't know what it's like to get on the plane. Take them to the plane. Boys, this is how we get on the plane. Well, can you get into the end zone here? Look at big third down. Yep. Outlaw's in the ball game now with Murphy. Two by two look. And there's Outlaw in motion and a flag thrown. A delay a game called against Boston College. Delay a game. So a delay against BC. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Please reset the game clock to 11 seconds. 11 seconds on the game clock. Well, there you have it. You're going to 
go for that end zone, try to punch it in. Doesn't matter too much for Adazio. You get a little bit more room there for the offense, but you got to look ahead. Remember, Mike Knoll, the new place kicker, has a kick room right. in a college game. So five more yards for him if they can't move it right here. Murphy to throw. Loops toward the end zone and overthrows his intended receiver, Charlie Callanan, at 6'4", and a flag has been thrown. This may be late on Murphy. Laid it out there. Callanan looked like he misjudged it a little, but if he runs through that football, it gives himself a better chance. Leapt too early and missed it. He had a step on the defensive back. Oh, Penalty against the Eagles. After the play, personal foul. Number 67, offense. The down will count. It's an incomplete pass. Fourth down. Right, James, here's Adazio's situation. You just mentioned Mike Nolan, whose longest field goal in high school a season ago was 45 years, or 45 yards. Bedford taking a little extra with Mike Rose. There's Noel, the freshman from Ohio, who's kicked three extra points and things have gone fine. But when he comes on to try a field goal, it'll be the first one of his college career. Now you back it up too far. Fourth down, defensively, make sure you bat it down. How many Hail Marys have we seen at the end of games to win it for him? And it shows that teams just aren't practicing as much as they need to. Talking it over, this defense. Timeout, North Carolina State. First charge of this half. This will be a 30-second timeout. You know, we visited with Dave Dorn, his staff enough, with Adazio and his staff enough to know this is some of the youth of these football teams playing out, too. Even when you get a veteran guy like a vet court making a silly penalty there off the incomplete pass. I'm glad you brought that up because that replay that we saw, I don't agree with that. That's it's it's Bettencourt whooped the guy, and you know a lot of times, hey, make sure he doesn't pop up and go make a play. Sure. And, and you know he, he pushed him while he was down, but it wasn't like it was anything that was malicious where he hit him. You know, he just kind of gave him another shot to make sure he stayed down there. Is the way I saw it. These guys are fighting their guts out there in the trenches. Well, it lives it on. His sleeve. And they're at 76. They're glad to have him back, too. Yeah, Gradual. Yep, Vergaro, Bobby Vergaro. And look who's in. Here we go. Yep. This is Howell now. This is Alex Howell to try the field goal. This is 52 and a half yards. And Dave Doran calls another timeout. 30 second charge timeout to North Carolina State. That is their second and of this half. He called a timeout because Tyler Murphy was on the field with him. <laughs> That's why Dave Doran punched that timeout. Well, he is the holder. He's, he's the holder. They've seen that. They just want to they want to talk it over and make sure that they don't go into the locker room down more than what could be 10 now. So it's a touchdown difference. This will be on the outer edge of the of the distance for Howell here, James. Oh, that's, I, that's that's my hope. If, if, if I'm coaching a football team, I got a guy that if things go wrong, or if I want to throw some trickery in there, I've got a guy to make a play like number two. Kick away by Howell he is no good. Miss to the right, and with three seconds left. Here in this first half, Boston College has an opportunity to slide by here, don't they? When you think about BC, they had a first down in the red zone and see a missed field goal. Nine plays and nothing to show for Steve Adazio's team. Well, week seven in the ACC. And of course, already today, the nation's number one team has remained that way. Florida State beats Syracuse 38 to 20. Georgia Tech and Duke meeting today. Big game in the Coastal. The Jackets had started 5 and 0 before hosting the Blue Devils today. And of course, Deshaun Watson and Clemson battling Louisville today at Frank Howard Field. Brissett 
Going to try and throw one to I-40 here on the final play, and it is caught <laughs> by Braylon Cherry. But the clock has expired to end the first half. And Brissett dialed up the sophomore Braylon Cherry on the final play of the first half, a 49-yard throw. But time expired before NC State could run another play. Wow. These defenses, everybody across the college football landscape. Halftime, BC with the lead. Jim visits with Coach Adazio. Thanks, Les. Coach, both teams started out hot offensively and then came up empty the last few possessions. What do you need to get back to? Well, I mean, we had some nice drives down here. We just took that up ball all the way down the field and then discombobulated at the end right there. We took a uh, delay game penalty coming from the sideline, which is hard to believe. And that, then we followed that up with a penalty, so we took ourselves right out of field goal range. We wanted to run the clock down and either score a touchdown or kick a field goal. We didn't operate that well. That cost us right there. Overall, how do you feel your guys are doing in the first real road game of the year? Well, I mean, offensively, I thought we played really well. I mean, we, you know, you're not going to do a whole lot better than that. You know, three consecutive possessions, bam, 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 right down the field, long drives. Defensively, we struggled early, but we didn't help them with the kickoff team. We gave bad field position. Thought we kind of gathered ourselves back up a little bit at the very end of the half on defense. We got to come out and play a great second half. Thanks, Coach. All right, Jen, thanks very much. I would agree, James. Great first half for Adazio's offense. They lead NC State by a score.